Mr. David Rees, thank you so much for taking the time for this interview. It's a pleasure, Mimi. Uh, and we'd like first to uh, you to highlight about the shift from analog to digital. Mm -hmm. How does it affect gaming companies, and how do you see this shift? Yes, of course, it, it's easy to talk about analog to digital, but of course there is a, a blurring mm -hmm. uh, in between. But analog was, to use the vernacular, very clunky, and it was very much consecutive. Mm -hmm. uh, and word of mouth was very slow. Uh, in the digital world, uh, it's possible to connect people just simultaneously. Mm -hmm. And from a marketing point of view, it means that things happen so much more quickly. People can dip in, mm -hmm. and they can dip out, mm -hmm. they can ignore it, mm. or, or they, can, they can take it up. So, uh, being in electronic communication, rather than just verbal communication or looking at an advert, has really revolutionized the way that not only information, mm -hmm. but how that companies can commercialize mm -hmm. the products that they, uh, that they put out. Mm -hmm. And they're using much more the, the digital communication. The, only, the other thing is very important is that in the old analog world, mm -hmm. you had the old adage that you have a magazine ad, but you weren't sure who was watching that, who was looking at that magazine ad. Mm -hmm. Now, if you mean a, I've gone on a site and you register your name, mm -hmm. we know that you are of a certain age, a certain gender, come from a certain country. Mm -hmm. And so when there is a bank of advertising, mm -hmm. you can target it. Let's mm -hmm. say that you like cars, as an example, you can target it. And so that, that ad is not wasted mm -hmm. anymore, it is absolutely targeting. Mm -hmm. So it's really, really um, making it easier for, uh, for advertisers, uh, and people are in commerce to, mm. uh, to do their jobs. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how does digital literacy pose a marketing uh, edge for, for companies, or is it, or doesn't it? Um, it does and it doesn't, in that the current theory is that you can put a seed into the internet, into a community, mm -hmm. and that seed can be passed on very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. But, and that is a big, big advantage, if the message is not positive, mm -hmm. that seed will not be passed on. Mm. So it's like the wiki area where people are very, very critical. If it's not quality, mm -hmm. if it's not true, if it's not honest, normally it will die mm. naturally. Mm -hmm. But if it's very positive and you have a good book or a good product, a good idea, mm -hmm. it will go it will it will it will it will go on very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. Now it's not enough to plant a seed. What you have to do is to get some sort of critical mass. So you plant lots of seeds. Now let me just get, or, or a big seed. Let me give you an example, a, uh, a real life example. When Susan Boyle, who was a very famous, now a very famous mm -hmm. Scottish singer, she was on, uh, what was it, um, X Factor or, or yeah. Someone's Got Talent, I'm not sure which one it was, I think it was X Factor. That, um, that program with Simon Cowell was so big, it was a big seed. Mm -hmm. And so that, that big seed meant that electronically, suddenly on YouTube, she became at the top. Mm -hmm. But had she not been a very good singer, or had X Factor not been a very big program, it maybe would not have worked. Mm -hmm. So it's not all good news, mm -hmm. but it can produce overnight success. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you discussed the term, which is the Wafi score. Yeah. So tell us more about it for those who didn't attend your session. Yeah. Well, the Wafi score is not something, of course, that I've invented. It really comes from Tara Hunt's book. And that is that you have on the, in a community now a status or an image mm -hmm. or a score. You can be very, very cool. Mm -hmm. Or you can be someone who is, mm, we don't like that person. Mm -hmm. So by putting on more blogs, putting out more information, doing certain things, mm -hmm. sending out news, you get some sort of woofy score. Mm -hmm. right? And it can be zero to infinity. Mm -hmm. And by just by being on there, you are judged by your by your peers, the people in the in, in the community. Mm -hmm. Now not just a person, and I know this is going to be one of your questions later, how can you market new products? Mm -hmm. Is that you can take a product and that would get a Wafi score mm. as well. So that by getting that particular score, if it's a very, very high score, so many people will be able to see that and how good it is, suddenly it will rise up and become 
become very, very popular. Mm -hmm. So again, you, instead of being a person, you say, how does this product, for example, um, I won't name any products, but how, what sort of score does this product get amongst a big, big community? Mm -hmm. And instead of putting adverts out, people, it's almost like a democratic society. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's judged in that way and people say, yes, it's great, and suddenly it becomes very, very successful. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so well, how is Pinko marketing related or different from that? Pinko marketing is really comes from that. It is the expertise, because if, if you understand, going into the internet and putting your product in can also be very dangerous. Mm -hmm. It's like going into um, a beehive, right? It's you know you can you can find the honey very quickly, but you can also get stung, mm. right? So the the pinko marketing is the, is really is the technique of being able to know uh, what message to plant, when to do it, and which demographics mm -hmm. to, to 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 go for. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So does that mean that demographic segmentation, the days of the demographic segmentation, are over? I won't say that they're over, but they are definitely changing because now you're tending to market into a particular community mm. within Facebook, uh, maybe on, on YouTube, uh, yeah. on, on, on Bebo, also MySpace, although these things are coming down, or you market into local communities. Mm. And it's not just Facebook, but in particularly in countries like uh, Japan, I guess Papa as well, mm -hmm. there are individual sites where you say, that's where we will go. We're not going to target the 15 to 18 year olds. Mm -hmm. We're going to target people who are on that community. Okay. People are on that community because they're bound by common interest. That's much more powerful mm -hmm. than me trying to market to someone who's 15 to, to 18 year old. Mm -hmm. Half of them may not have common interests. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. So final question, are we living in the perfect swarm? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, there are so many different swarms, but mm -hmm. The Perfect Swarm is a book by um, Professor Fisher, and which is how to negotiate in this internet environment. Right? Mm -hmm. So you can say if you're walking along a street and two, two crowds are walking, to, let's say they're in I don't know, downtown Manhattan, and oh, people are walking that way and people are walking that way. Mm -hmm. So eventually what will happen is you will find naturally there will be two columns and they will walk like that. That will be, it's a natural selection. Mm -hmm. right? That will happen. People won't continue to try and bump into each other. Yeah. So in this internet world, and there are many, many models like that. Mm -hmm. So for example, what is the shortest route? The way that ants go. Mm -hmm. How do bees find where, they, where, where, where the flowers with the, with the honey are? Mm -hmm. um, how do you avoid people uh, in crowds? So, for example, there was a disaster in, in I think it was in one of the Hajj's, I can't remember how many years ago, mm -hmm. the, the government, the KSA, looked at it and said, how can we avoid this? And that was, if you like, a swarm as well. Are there patterns that we can employ? And there are rules that you can adopt to help you navigate this internet now, this internet swarm, whether it's a Facebook or whether, or whether it's a, a people. Mm. You can avoid the swarm just by not going online. Mm. But it is fun mm. being in the swarm. So yes, the answer is, if you want to be, you can be in the perfect swarm. Yes. Thank you so much for this lovely interview. Okay, Thank you so Mina, much. you're very kind. Thank Sorry. you very much.